We are wrestling. Olympic Hero Kurt Angle, and you're listening to the We Are Wrestling Podcast. We Are Wrestling Podcast. Batista! Let's flip and go. You're watching We Are Wrestling. Stop! I'm the host with the most. You are by far the least intelligent. What is going on? We are Wrestling Maniacs. Ben here, one half of the We Are Wrestling podcast. We are Wrestling Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, baby. And we, we are wrestling. What is up? We are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, Mr. We Are Wrestling himself, the best one, Donnie here. And my co-host, the Load Rager, Ben, is unfortunately not here with me right now. He will be with us later on during the show. But I'm here solo to let you guys know what's going on with this podcast because... Our goal is to give you guys consistent episodes, new episodes every Saturday, you know, wherever you get your podcasts or, you know, over on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel. And we've been very consistent, you know, for the year of 2023. And unfortunately, you know, the Load Rager, he is, you know, very busy this week. And we're supposed to record the podcast on Thursday, December 14th. But, you know, he was running into, you know, some technical issues with, you know, his microphone and his camera and his entire setup. It was a shit show. So, you know, right now, Ben, he's running around with his head cut off. And especially with the holidays around the corner, he is going to be, you know, a part of the second half of the show. But I do want to let you guys know that I do have a special guest that will be a part of the We Are Wrestling Podcast 87 for the first half during the We Are Wrestling Weekly Recap, and that is my co-host for Old School vs. New School, which will be coming out to the We Are Wrestling exclusive Patreon page in 2024, the voice of the voiceless. Phil will be alongside with me during the first half of the show, so I don't have to do this show all solo And then, you know, getting into the We Are Wrestling weekly news and rumors and the main event topic, of course, the Lone Ranger Ben. He will be making up some time tomorrow, which will be the day the podcast comes out. So we are really on a time crunch here. So if you're not a We Are Wrestling maniac yet already and you're listening to the podcast, give us a five-star review, not just any review, a best one review and download the episode, but if you haven't checked out the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel, and you're not a part of the thousands of subscribers, we recommend you to hit that subscribe button now, turn on the post notifications, videos be coming out of nowhere, like an RKO, and of course you already know, the grind is real. And you never know what's going to happen And, you know, the show must go on. That's what they say. And we're going to make it work for this week. And we have a really stacked show for you guys. We have lots of awesome, you know, things to talk about that happened during, you know, the week of, you know, pro wrestling. And, of course, you know, we have lots of awesome news and rumors that we got to dive into with, you know, the getting put over segment and, you know, the comment of the weeks. And, of course the main event topic, but I do want to also, you know, plug a couple things over on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel. If you guys have not checked out the big event New York vlog, it just came out earlier this week over on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel. I got the opportunity to meet lots of wrestlers and it's such a great vlog and some really cool, you know, insight on some of these, you know, professional wrestlers. And I also, you know, posted some wrestling reactions this week as well. I had, you know, a couple Monday Night Raw reactions with Seth Rollins and CM Punk going face-to-face for the first time. 
So I hope you guys, you know, are excited for this. I know I am because obviously the show must go on and we're going to make this work. And I think that this is going to be an awesome episode. So with that being said, let's get into the We Are Wrestling weekly recap for the We Are Wrestling podcast 87. We're back, and today, here on the We Are Wrestling Podcast, we're doing things very differently, and we're here with the voice of the voiceless, the voice of Blitzkrieg, the voice bro. of the Phil, Facebook. say what's up to the We Are Wrestling Maniacs. What's up, everyone? How are you? Good to see everybody. Happy holidays, and let's go. Let's fucking go. What's up? What are we doing? Hell yeah. So... Phil, I have you here on the podcast because obviously the Road Rager Ben, my co-host for the We Are Wrestling podcast, he's got a lot of things going on with the holidays and he's only going to be able to do, you know, the second half of the show. So we are going to be doing the We Are Wrestling weekly recap. But before we do that, Phil and I, you know, we do have an exclusive podcast coming to the We Are Wrestling Patreon page in 2024. Bringing back We Are Wrestling, old school versus new school. We got lots of big things lined up. Phil, how are you feeling about that? I'm pretty good. I mean, I'm accepting my role as the old guy now. Like, I realize, you know, with age, some things are better with age, like fine wine, myself, you know. I'm just going to have the role with it, dude. Hey, man, I have to, you know, stick up for new school, and that's kind of tough in, you know, wrestling today. <laughs> uh, it's, tough to, it's tough to stick up for Tony Khan these days, but... Oh my goodness. Good thing, like, with the we the weekly recaps, we have nothing AEW related to talk about here because I'm going to be completely honest with you. And, you know, to all the listeners out there, you guys have heard me bitch for the last, you know, couple weeks about, you know, AEW. And I did not watch Dynamite at all this week. I even checked, you know, the YouTube page for the highlights, and there's nothing that's worth talking about. Bro, I heard that the Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho um, segment was so cringe that people had to stop watching. Yeah, like, didn't, like, Kenny Omega, like, nobody, like, there's, like, no reactions to what he was yeah, saying. None. Like, he was just talking, like, in circles. I, I, I didn't watch that. it because I care about myself and I care about my mental health, so I didn't watch it this week. <laughs> um... <laughs> The holidays are hard enough to put myself through that much torture. I hear you. I hear you. I'd be listening to Christmas music all the time. Out I'm just going to say it, dude. I, 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 rem- I remember That's torture enough. <laughs> I remember going on your show. I don't know if it was old school, new school, or this one. Like Last year saying, dude, Cody was right probably, man. And no one believed me before. Then with CM Punk, I'm like, you know what, dude? It seems like he was pushed. No one really agreed with me. I'm like, whatever, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, trust me, later on in the We Are Wrestling podcast, me and the Lone Rager, we do have some AEW stuff to talk about. But now, let's get into some of the good stuff with, you know, the We Are Wrestling weekly recap. And starting things off, last Friday on Friday Night SmackDown, during a match against Asuka, Charlotte Flair looked like she suffered a knee injury. I don't know if you saw, like, the pictures of her or, like, the videos that were surfacing from you know, the show that happened, it looked like, you know, she was dealing with a really bad knee injury. What's your thoughts on that? Um, She's an MVP, especially around WrestleMania time. Um, And with the Women's Royal Rumble coming up, hopefully it's something small. And that hopefully if it is an injury, it's not going to be a gone for a few months injury. It's more like a keep on TV, progress yourself through like interviews and stuff, but like rest up the foot, rest up the knee. For a little while, that way she can make Rumble. She can make WrestleMania because, dude, Charlotte Flair and WrestleMania go hand in hand these days. She's probably oh, absolutely. The she's a beast. She's in my top ten wrestlers, not just female wrestlers. She's just she's a touch above, man. She brings out the best in all of her opponents. I may not like her personally, but I never liked her dad personally. But I love him as a wrestler. Like Ric Flair is Ric Flair for a reason. He's amazing. Same you have with, to respect the performer 100%. Yeah, 100%, dude. Same with Charlotte. It, it's She's she's a once-in-a-lifetime talent. And it, it's crazy that, like, in a different world, she would have never even wrestled. Like, what, what would Charlotte Flair be? A fucking goddamn, like, real estate agent? Like, 
Yeah, because like a lot, a lot of people don't really understand this about Charlotte. The reason why she decided to become a pro wrestler was because that was her brother's dream before he mm-hmm. passed away, unfortunately. Exactly. So it's like, we never know what could have been had he been alive. We, we never would have seen Charlotte, maybe. She would have been in the front row cheering on her brother, and who knew what kind of career he would have. But, I mean, she legitimately changed women's wrestling. Absolutely. And, like, the same thing could be said, like, with, you know, the three other horse women as well. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Bailey, you know, Becky Lynch, like they've all had, you know, first class Hall of Fame careers. And I really do hope that this is something small. As of right now, nothing, you know, has come out yet. I know, I believe she got like an MRI done earlier this week on the knee. And hopefully, you know, she is not out for a long time because I'm not going to lie. As, you know, a pro wrestling fan, a maniac, I really wasn't the biggest fan of her until she came back from this long break that she had. And I feel like, you know, with Triple H's creative, the way that he's been, you know, using her, she's been putting over, you know, other talent, and she's already an established star, which, you know, I also said that <laughs> when Nia Jax came back to WWE, because there's a lot of negative, you know, feedback <laughs> on her coming back. But th- the reason why she needed to come back was to put over, you know, some of these Triple H girls that aren't established yet on TV consistently every week and Nia Jax just like Charlotte Flair they have you know won the women's world championships they've been on pay-per-views premier live events and they've already been seen by the WWE universe and Charlotte you know towards WrestleMania season she's always putting on classics which I do think that you know with WWE stacked women's division it will be kind of you know a huge loss if she's not, you know, a part of this year's WrestleMania. I agree with everything you said there, man. Um, I I love Charlotte as a performer. And what you said happened with you is kind of like you don't know what you got till it's gone. Um, With Charlotte coming back, I mean, did the women's division kind of lack a little bit? In my opinion, maybe a tad, but like there's so many future stars right now that are coming out that the WWE women's division is. I'd say even maybe above the men's right now for like people who are going to be there for a long time, who are going to have great careers. There's a lot of talented women coming out of the Triple H studio, whatever you want to call it, dude. He oh, is developmental. I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. And the girls that got an NXT right now, there's so many. Stars. Oh my God. Like I gave NXT a chance. Like I watched Deadline the day after, and I'm so mad. It was literally like an hour away from us. Bro, and same here. I'm so mad I chose not to go. I'm, Me too. I'm beating last myself minute, up over last it. Last minute, I'm like, I don't feel like driving that far. And then, of course, we see the picture of CM Punk at the headquarters, and it's like, damn it. <laughs> right, right, dude. It was like that ultimate tease. But, but yeah, man, I, I think Charlotte being hurt, um, Naya coming back, Charlotte coming back to help put over new talent. I mean, dude, it's great to see Charlotte and Becky squash their beef. And that was really conference. good to see during the press conference. Yeah, that was cool. And I mean, like you said, people gave Nia shit. But I mean, dude, Nia, you're talking about her. Yep, but here's the big thing, Phil, that a lot of people aren't going to talk about. Because they all wanted to say, oh, you know, she's an unsafe worker, this and that. Ever since she came, ba- came back, who's been injured? Zero. And she's got herself in the best shape of her, you know, career. And she's, you know, much safer worker now than she was. And she's in, you know, solid storylines. And she has put over, you know, some of these, you know, wrestlers. The way I see it, too, is um, she's, if you get a win over Nia Jax, that means something. Yep, exactly. So, like, whoever they're building with her, that means something. When Rhea gets that win over Nia Jax, it's a lot bigger than a win over like Natalia. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Natalia may have been there forever, but like you're expecting her to lose. Naya, they she can win sometimes. Like they put it in there and they'll throw you up, and it's believable no matter what the outcome. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like Naya Jax, you know, she's not like most girls. That was, you know, the intro, like to her theme yeah. song. And that's the thing about her, like. And that's, like, why, like, I've been trying to push WWE to, like, give us that Nia Jax versus Rhea feud. Because Rhea has been, you know, dominating this women's division. So if you bring someone in like Nia Jax, who's already established, 
who already has an accolades and like have Rhea, you know, get that moment. Like, you know, Hulk Hogan did the Andre the giant. That's only <laughs> going to solidify her as a more dominant champion. Yeah, I agree. In the and process not, of it. Nia's not a big, I mean, Hogan Andre is one way to go. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm down. just comparing and contrasting. <laughs> no, I get it. Because it's it put right, Hulk Hogan right. over as a champion. Exactly, when he did that. dude. Exactly. I, I think Rhea doesn't need to be put over as a champion anymore. Um, I think the beginning of her reign was very boring. They didn't yes. know what to do with it. There was so much Judgment Day shit going on. Dominic was becoming the hottest heel in the business. Like Workhorse it, of the year. Oh, dude, I, performer of the year. Are you kidding me, dude? More main events than anybody, dude. Held the NXT North American Championship, which consistently the main event on fucking Raw and SmackDown and NXT. One week he did all three. Yep. Dominic was slept on. Dude, if you would have told me two years ago that Dominic Mysterio like would be the MVP of 2023, I would have laughed in your fucking face. Yep, it wouldn't have been on my bingo card, that's for sure. Fuck no, dude. And, and dude, fucking Eli Drake, LA Knight getting the fucking Eli Drake treatment. Like, that wasn't on my bingo card either, but we, like, fans made it happen. And God, I love it. That's what I love about the Triple H era, is he's listening to fans. And that's exactly what Tony Khan said he was going to do in the beginning of AEW, and he's not doing it. And that's why a lot of people feel the way they feel. But speaking of NXT... Let's dive into the next weekly recap. At yep. NXT Deadline, we saw Dragon Lee defeat Dirty Dom for the NXT North American Championship. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on this title change? I think that Dominic gave new relevance to the North American Championship. Yes, he um, did. You know, not saying that the former champions didn't give it like its gusto. I really believe the North American title is one of the best titles in WWE right now. Like, they've had some real... Like, Wesley's reign was amazing, dude. And you Carmelo look at Gargano's A's. reigns, Carmelo A's. I mean, Dragon League getting it is like, hey, this is a future luchador who we're going to try and get over. And WWE's track record with getting over luchadors, let's be honest, isn't that great in my opinion, Yeah, dude? it's not the best. <laughs> like, you got Rey Mysterio. You then had Kalisto. Like, I mean, I love Sam Ryder also. I know him personally, but, like, he never was able to get that bump. Sin Cara. Like, Sin Cara never got that bump. All three versions of him. Freaking like, so here we go again with Dragon Lee, who's super talented and I hope it works. And I mean, but it's it's hard to capture the magic in a, in a bottle that, Mer that Mysterio was for WCW when he came out, ECW and then WWE. Like the guy is the goat of the luchadors for a reason. I think they've done a fantastic job with Dragon Lee so far. I think the way that they brought him onto the main roster has been a very smooth transition. And I feel like, you know, WWE's got a lot of big plans for him. I will say this. I thought that it was a great surprise. I wasn't expecting Dragon Lee to beat Dirty Dom, which any time in pro wrestling, when something's unpredictable, <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. But I will good. say my only critique about this, my only critique, and it's a small one, I wish that, like, when it comes to champions, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, it would stay on their brand. Like, Dirty Dom, don't get me wrong, I love the title run. He's done a great job with it, and he's gotten more reps in the ring, you know, going to NXT, doing matches, on top of, you know, working Raw and sometimes SmackDown. But with the draft, like, that's a big thing with me is OCD. And if you're on Raw, I want you to stay on Raw. If you're on SmackDown, stay on SmackDown. NXT let the other people, you know, develop, but like, that's just a little critique. I do like what they've done with the championship. And honestly, I can't wait to see where this goes. No, I, I get what you're saying. And I agree with you. Um, I think the reason they did it the way they're doing it is with TKO forming and trying to bring as many eyes to the product as they can, they got to elevate certain brands and negotiated talks. Like, I mean, it's, Oh, of course you're, lo you're looking at like, a new home for Raw, probably, dude. A new home for NXT has already been said. Um, you want people to have eyes on the product. And, I mean, eventually, yeah, I'd like the draft to actually mean what it meant back in, like, the early aughts, where you watch SmackDown to see Batista. You watch Raw to see Randy Orton. Like, it, it's... I want to watch Raw and SmackDown and have them feel like completely different shows, not have other people walking back and forth on them. I get it. And that's why I want the tag titles to be separated again. Oh my God. I want those titles to be separated so bad. Anytime like on the podcast, when me and Ben have to talk about the tag titles, 
that's always the first thing I bring up is these titles need to be split up because like n- back in the day, like when it was under Vince McMahon's control with the tag titles, like, yeah, like one tag titles could have been fine because Vince didn't care about that yeah. division. But Triple H, on the other hand, my God, Raw and SmackDown have so many solidified tag teams. And mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, having separate titles could definitely benefit some of these tag teams, like Pretty Deadly, you know, Carl DIY Anderson, and Luke Gallows, together. Street Profits. Like, yeah, absolutely, man. Like, they could definitely do so much more. And designs. We need new designs on those. Titles. Oh, my God. They're so ugly. They're, so they're, they're such ugly titles, dude. I hate them. I've always hated them. They're so weird, man. I don't yeah. get it. But and that's yeah, thing- I agree. I want them split. I want them to go because there's too much talent wasted. And there's so many great tag teams on both brands, man. Like, mm-hmm. And speaking it. of those tag titles, one thing, like, in my school, because I graduated at East Long Meadow High School, and our, you know, symbol is a Spartan. And in the trophy case... I've had to look at that ugly fucking title for four years of my life. <laughs> dude, yeah, it, it's, it's so <laughs> gross, dude. I don't get it. Like, I mean, I got nothing else to say about it, man. They're gross. I, I don't hate them. I think they're ugly. I, I don't get it. Yeah, so I definitely have to agree, though. I think that this was a good move for Dragon Lee. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it gets more eyes on NXT for the NXT-type performers. Not just to see what Dom's gonna do this week. He was he elevated people, and he elevated himself. Which, dude, you, you can double get over that way. Like that's huge. Because see, that loss means nothing on the main yep, roster to him. Exactly. Nothing. And that's the thing. As long as you can, you know, work despite winning or losing, like that's how you know, you know, you're over. And Dom right now is one of the top villains in WWE. And I think that, oh man, give it a couple of years, he's gonna be a world champion. Oh, absolutely. 100%. No doubt. No doubt in my mind, dude. The kid's got, it's it's insane how fast he learned. Like, he's got heat in the palm of his hand, and he just knows how to orchestrate it. Yeah. So, every week on the We Are Wrestling podcast, I always ask the Load Rager Ben, the highlight of the week in the wrestling world. So, before we get into our last two, you know, weekly recap topics, Phil, what's your highlight of the week this week in I the mean, wrestling world? How could it not be CM Punk and Seth Rollins confronting each other? Like, I don't know who didn't mark out at that. That that was oh my you know, god, my reaction I, I marked out. I knew which you can check coming. out on the We Are Wrestling YouTube page. I knew it was coming, and I'm like, any minute now, I'm gonna hear that music hit. And as soon as I did, I still jumped up. I'm like, oh my god, man, here we go. And people complained about the promo being being Punk like not firing back, but I think it's smart because this is gonna go all the way to WrestleMania, man. You're saving exactly. your exactly. And he said, let it, to him, let it like, build, let it build. This is Patience. the last time I'll let you talk to me like this to my face. The next time will be different. And dude, that's just, that's dangling the little thing. Like, Hey, this is going to happen. Here you go. And now we wait. And dude, I don't want it to be a quick <laughs> done. I want to see this through nice and slow. Exactly. I want that slow burn. Cause it's going to be fucking amazing, dude. Like I saw a meme, like, I can hear my way from Lip Biscuit playing in the background with the two of them staring. Oh my! Like, I, I I saw that video. Fantastic! And I'm wow. like, wow, absolutely, absolutely. Highly like, recommend is, we are wrestling maniac listeners to go check that out. It's all yeah. over social media. It's um, such a great it, video package that so this fan good. made. It's it's so good. It's this WrestleMania. I mean, you got night one and night two. Cody and Roman, and CM Punk and Seth Rollins. And if it's not that, I mean. At this point, shame on WWE. That's how mm. I feel. And then you're going to have Lesnar and Gunther, Logan Paul and LA Knight, and just Jimmy and Jay. Like, I'm, I'm already shaping in my Gunther head. Gunther and Brock like, Lesnar, too, potentially. Yeah. It, it's it's Gunther and Brock. Yeah. It, it's like, dude, there's so much. This could really shape up to be the WrestleMania this year. And it all, like, I feel like it all started Survivor Series night. Like, it's early. We're getting that build now because it's like, we got that punk with, with like, I remember when Bray came back and the show was over and then all of a sudden, like, the lights and you saw the puppets. Yeah. And they did the same thing with CM Punk. It was like, all right, there's the logo. That, that was such an amazing return. Like, everything about that produced 
hat goes oh, yeah. off to WWE on that one. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. But I, got, but I gotta say this, man, like about you know the whole you know CM Punk and Seth Rollins thing, which I will give my thoughts on that and during the next topic <laughs> here. But my highlight of the week, I'm gonna go, you know, on a little bit of like an underrated <laughs> highlight of the week. And I gotta say, Trick Williams is my highlight of the week. Like okay. the NXT deadline. That, okay. you know, Iron Man, you know, survivor match that they had. The crowd was so behind him, and I've always been a big fan of him because obviously Carmelo Hayes, you know, Christian Casanova, you know, he did a lot of work, you know, in our area, and, you know, Melo, he shoots, he don't miss. I think they've done a great job, you know, building up Trick Williams, and now that whole whoop that trick is so over with the crowd, and, like, he's really starting to stand on his own two feet, and I, I, I think, think that, you know, he's going to be a main event guy, you know, for years to come. <laughs> what's the uh, pay-per-view they're doing um wrestlemania weekend so wrestlemania weekend i believe is damn i think it's like takeover something yeah maybe but it, it's the that, that, if they don't put the belt on trick there it's well actually know, I, yeah, I, what, they, what it like because i've been you know paying attention a little bit of nxt and it seems like what they're doing is they did this whole mystery attack thing oh yeah, yeah i saw that Shop with carmelo H, yeah. and carmelo i think what's going to happen is Trick, because obviously he won the match, so he pretty much is the number one contender to go against Ilya during, you know, New Year's Evil, and I think that's where Carmelo's going to screw him out of jealousy, oh, yeah. and then they're going to build that match for Mania Weekend, okay, which I, I think can see that, that. Yeah, that makes sense. got to be my highlight of the week. I am getting really behind him, mm -hmm. and I think Booker T on commentary is just adding so much more to that, because every time he comes out, Booker T's like, whoop that trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, Booker T's amazing, dude. I swear to God, like, I smoke a lot of weed. Like, I don't think anyone smokes more than Booker T before a show. Like, he <laughs> is my favorite person on commentary ever because sometimes he just goes off on these freaking tangents that make no <laughs> sense at all. But you can't help but be like, yeah, you're right, Booker. But it's entertaining, and that's what it's all about, like, when it comes to professional wrestling. It's all about yeah. the entertainment violent theater, man. It's one of the best ways I ever heard it described. Absolutely. But now getting back into the, we are wrestling weekly recap this Monday on raw, your highlight of the week. We saw Seth Rollins and CM Punk go face to face for the first time ever. What's your thoughts on the first? Not ever. Between the two? Not ever. Okay. Not NXT. ever. I do. You're right. NXT. Okay. You're right. NXT. I, I scratch that. And dude, and raw the shield. Yep. Remember the CM yep, Punk with the shield and CM Punk towards the but end this, of all um, his is, run. This is more that Seth Rollins, the main event man Seth Rollins, is now seeing former main event CM Punk. And it's like these two clash so perfectly that you can't help but be excited. Like and the I, there's do behind Oh it. yeah, there, there's real animosity there. And you can't get better than real animosity. And that's the problem. Is Tony Khan couldn't put personal bullshit aside. And do business. And the Young Bucks refusing to meet with Punk. Those times, dude, all in should have been fucking headlined by CMFTR versus the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. And yep, that was money that on the table that they left. It. They left so much money on the table. It's so stupid and childish, dude. And then I mean, dude, I, I gotta get, I gotta say one thing. Just oh, go right thing. ahead. A hundred and forty. I we're, we're made, I made one hundred and forty-three million dollars this year. I'm just gonna tell everyone that. Because yep. it doesn't matter if I did or not. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like, AEW, they've missed so many opportunities. And honestly, I'm so happy to see CM Punk come back home. I think that, you know, CM Punk, he had to, you know, see, see it on the other side. That, you know, yeah. it's not always greener. And no, I think he no. learned a lot from it. And now, you know, he's back in WWE. And I'm glad to see him, you know, back. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, you know, smiling, laughing. And like Weird. some of the things, you know, even going to the performance center and like really, you know, taking that leadership role. Yep. I'm so happy to finally talk about positive things with Punk because I feel like half this podcast, me and, you know, the Lone Rager, there's been nothing but negative drama with CM Punk. And it just feels good to like finally talk good about him. I, I feel like he's I been agree. good with this D whole Bingo. Situation. That's what it is to me. I believe it's just misunderstood. He's a he's a take no bullshit guy, yep. who will take no bullshit. And if he has a problem, he'll fucking tell you. And those type and, of people in this world, they always get the shit end of the stick. That's just how yep. it is. 
Absolutely. Dude. The realer you are in a business that's fake, it's hard. So to all the AEW marks out there that are, you know, listening to this, you could thank Jungle Bitch, Jack Perry, for the downfall of AEW. Oh, and it's the young guy taking that victory lap around the ring with no fans. <laughs> but honestly, like, I do got to give my thoughts now on the first, you know, interaction. And just like you said on the highlight of the week, I want it to be slow. We're on the road to WrestleMania. Less is more. CM Punk didn't have to do anything. And I know there's some fans out there that are saying, why didn't they put their hands on each other yet? Patience. Take your time. Let it play out. Let the I want to be romanced. Out. Love it. I want to be romanced by this feud. I want this feud to take me to dinner. I want this feud to whisper in my ear, and I'm going to pull away just to make them think I'm not interested, but I really am. Then I want it to tell me I had a really good time with you. And then I'm going to wait three weeks to call it back. And then I'm going to go back there and be like, all right, cool, let's do this again. I want it to last forever, so I want it to be magical. And that's the thing. The first thing I saw after that Survivor Series video of Seth Rollins throwing that tantrum, which, man, that was a great way to get people talking. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Whether it was a work or a shoe, I'm going to believe that it was a shoe just because I'm so interested in this, the fan side of me. But I got to say this, you know, about the whole, you know, Rollins and Punk thing. Take our time. Let it build that. Let it build up. And I think that, you know, I, the first thing I saw during all of this was comparisons to Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. And Absolutely. I see it. That's why, oh, yeah. like, we need to just, you know, let it play out and let's be patient because we have a beautiful story being written. Exactly, dude. We need to do some over the pants stuff first, man. We're not ready to fuck. We need exactly. to get ready to go there, dude. Like, let's they put just the, had the first in date. the Royal Rumble. We, we need like, to take <laughs> We need to take our time. <laughs> exactly, dude. I don't want to meet their parents or anything, but like, I mean, I don't want to dive right down. I want her to make me earn it. And like, that's the thing. I don't want to throw them together. Like, here you go. They're, they're doing it. Yay. Like Tony Khan with his action figures. Ooh, I got that. Ooh, this week I got that. Hold on. The Tony Khan. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, oh, let's do a tournament with this guy and this guy and this guy. And oh, dude. Hey, Phil, I do have a question real quick. I do have a real quick question. Do you have a blade for um, John Moxley here? <laughs> Bro, I, first off, first off, now you got me, you got me, uh, Swerve Strickland, probably the hottest he's ever been. And they make him lose to Moxley Fair and then cut to the goddamn shit with the devil. Like, Why? That was another missed opportunity was the devil. <laughs> oh, bro. Bro, if it's even Jungle Boy, I'm going to laugh so fucking hard. Yeah. Like, I mean, who could it be that's going to matter anymore, dude? The only person like that I kind of want the devil to be is Kyle O'Reilly. Just because of the Adam Cole and the Roger Strong situation, the MJF, I feel like it would make sense if it was him. But if it's Jungle dude, Bitch, oh my God. But here's the deal too, man. Like At the end of the day, they had a storyline going that was NWO type worthy, but really felt more like retribution um, or aces and eights redone. Um, And they're going to, they're going to cap it off with Kyle O'Reilly, bro. How's that going to put new eyes on the product? The NWO work was Hulk Hogan. Like, like, how's it going to work if it's jungle boy? (laughs) Like if it's Wardlow or if it's fucking even like, MJF himself, especially if like he, re- I mean, the rumor he resigned till 2027, but like the only way that they can make it make sense at this point is Adam Cole. But like, we all know yeah. that's not Adam Cole. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, I really it's see it going nowhere now. It's sad. It really is. It's sad because like, there's so many talented people there that just won't get out of fucking their own way. It seems because they like the way it's going. Like, I mean, John Moxley should not be the face of any fucking company. I'll just say it. I don't, I, I mean, they get a lot of love for him, dude, but like. Well, like GCW, like something like Deathmatch Wrestling, yeah, but like not like yeah. television, not AEW, like dude, AEW no. or WWE. I'm so fucking bored of him, dude. Like, it's. Should have taken that break. You know, I'm just, I just, I'm done, dude. Like, 
Well, we do know. have one more weekly recap here. And right now, in you know, on the SmackDown brand, we're getting this United States Championship tournament. Winner will be facing Logan Paul for his championship. Carmelo Hayes has been announced as the mystery NXT guy that will be entering the U.S. title tournament. What's your thoughts on him being, you know, the mystery guy? Um, it's cool and all, but if they're going to do that feud with Trick, what's the point? I mean, it's not like he's going to stand in the main roster after. I will say that He's a great wrestler, but. Because here's something that I could see them doing, which honestly would be pretty cool to get more eyes on NXT. You could always have Carmelo Hayes, you know, pretty much go into this tournament, make it to maybe like the finals or something. And then, you know, have him get screwed by Trick Williams because he got screwed for his NXT Payback. belt. Yeah. And that's that going to bring more eyes, you know, over to NXT and see that feud. Happen. Yeah, I like that. That's a great idea. See, there you go. You you have the idea. Go get go get paid. That's a great idea. I love it. I really do. That's a great idea for it. Because honestly, whoever wins it, like, I don't think they're going to win the belt. Because they're no. going to probably keep it on Logan to WrestleMania. So, like, they're LA probably... Knight's taking the title from Logan, I think, at Mania. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. The superstar versus the megastar. It writes itself. It's going to be perfect, dude. Um, I could see someone like Escobar winning it, dude. And, like, with that interference with Carmelo and Trick and all that shit, that could be cool to do it, too. And, I mean, he could lose because Rey Mysterio comes out and screws. There's so many ways you could write that. The other guys, it's like, I don't even... I don't think that anyone could really step to Logan in a way where it's going to make it relevant. Whereas Santos and Logan would make sense. He's already worked with Ray. They both hate it. That'd be kind of cool. Um, well, him and Kevin Owens too. Like, I feel like they can put on a little good rivalry for the Rumble. Oh yeah. That'd be, that'd be a good show too. for the Rumble too. And Kevin always shines in the Rumble, man. He always puts on amazing matches. And um, I don't know. I think Logan's such a good performer now, which it's scary to think of how fucking good that kid really is. Mm-hmm. Um, he could work with anyone in that tournament. I mean, Carmelo is just, he could work with anybody. That guy's one of the best in the business right now. Hell, he got Cody back in. You know what I mean? Like, he trained Cody to get back from that injury, dude. He's the guy who worked with him. Like, that shows you how good he is. Yeah, and that's the thing about, you know, the whole Carmelo Hayes thing. I actually really like this because I feel like he's done everything on NXT, and I kind of hope after this Trick Williams feud he does go on to the main roster. I feel like it is time. I think oh, WWE's yeah. definitely got some big plans for him. I think he's going to be a huge star in the mid card division. Oh, and absolutely. honestly, putting him in this tournament is a great way to get more eyes, not only on NXT, but himself as well. Because obviously, if you didn't watch that NXT episode when they went against AEW, the two NXT guys that WWE threw all their eggs in that basket was Carmelo Hayes and Braun Breaker. And I feel yep. like for the next, you know, five to 10 years, they're going to be main event in WrestleMania. Absolutely. Braun Breaker is another. Especially star. Braun Breaker. Yeah. yeah that guy Somebody I'm insane. super behind. Oh, absolutely. dude. He'll probably be the night after Mania. That's my guess on Raw. He might be the debut there. That'd be sick. Absolutely. I'd love to see that happen. Yeah, no, definitely agree with you on that. But before, you know, we, you know, get the Load Rager Ben back here on, you know, the We Are Wrestling podcast, I do got to ask you about our main event topic since, you know, you're not going to be here. And I already know all the We Are Wrestling maniacs, they want the scoop. And obviously, we got to keep them in the loop. So with, you know, the main event topic pretty much this week, we're going to be talking about, you know, Tony Khan and AEW's whole you know, TBS deal, you know, potentially, you know, being being gone gone because WWE now they're interested in, you know, getting WWE over to Warner brothers discovery. What's your thoughts on that news? I don't know if you read the article. Well, if he can bring um, a briefcase over to Warner brothers to meet with them and show them all the five star ratings that Dave Meltzer gave them, maybe he'll have a chance. (laughs) I mean, that's worth more than money, right? I mean, it's better than eyes. It's a Dave Meltzer five star rating. I know, right? Maybe maybe he can have another tournament that goes nowhere for another belt that means nothing. You know, I mean, that's great. AEW's biggest enemy was letting the inmates run the asylum and letting the person running the entire company be a fan. Um, I What they did at first at Daily's Place was amazing. They did the TNA type thing because they were forced to. Small arena, passionate program, people who care about wanting to elevate wrestling. Everything they were was what they wanted to be. And then they became the Vince McMahon WWE that everybody hated. And 
WWE became the AEW that everyone wanted WWE to become. So I thank them for what they did. And I was behind AEW. I'm still behind a lot of the talent. Hell, a lot of the talent. I think that's like, honestly, like Blitz Creek. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but oh, like, no, no, it's good. that's the thing. Like, that's the reason why I think I'm still holding on to AEW because the talent, they're so talented. And yeah. there's so many independent pro wrestlers that we got to see wrestle at, you know, Blitzkrieg Pro, you know, yeah. Northeast Wrestling, all of these amazing promotions. And they're finally getting the opportunity to be seen by more, you know, fans. Like then you're MJF burying. and Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara. And it's unfortunate. Like, they have the talent. But yeah. with Tony Khan's lack of experience and not getting help, it's just a disaster, unfortunately. I, I love MJF. I think he's just great. He's going to be around for years. But I feel like the TNT title right now means more than the World Heavyweight title with how this thing has been with it. It's like the, the biggest champion they had, I think, was Kenny Omega because – he made the belt feel like a world heavyweight championship. I love MJF, but like, it doesn't feel like a world heavyweight championship to me right now. Do you want me to tell you why? Why? Because they're more focused on him and his best friend, Adam Cole, holding the fucking Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships when MJF hasn't even been on an episode of Ring of Honor. That's the big issue there, too. What There's they've no done separation. in Ring of Honor is... A joke, dude. It, it but is, that, but that's why because earlier in the night at All In, they had MJF and Adam Cole go against Ozzy Open. Yep, and he did it by himself. I, I, I get it, dude. It's, it's poorly run. It, it's, he loves the Japanese tournament style stuff, but he's also trying to do the storyline stuff, and you can't combine those two and make a yeah. weekly program. And you can't have someone like John Moxley being the face of your company every fucking week. It gets boring. He's becoming the bloody John Cena. Like, it's becoming a joke. The fact that he won that Swerve Strickland match this week, like, just shows Especially you they have no Wolf's idea what they're doing. Is ridiculous. Not just that. Think about this, dude. Ready? Hangman comes back from losing to Swerve. What do they do? Put him in a title picture with MJF. Yep. Yeah, Swerve jobs out to Moxley. When he was already ahead in the numbers, everyone's fucking loving it, dude. Got the best entrance in the game, a number one downloaded song on fucking like Apple Music at one point, dude. Even like, what are you doing? Push the man to the fucking moon. Like but, you shouldn't be losing at all. And then No. Because then like you're adding more legitimacy to him. And then like whenever he goes for the AEW world title and he wins, oh my god, like he's unbeatable. Who's mm -hmm. gonna they, end oh, this reign? You can do they something like Jay that. White. The way they treated Jay White during that feud with MJF as well, dude. Like, do I think they're gonna they're gonna lose the TBS and TNT slot to WWE? I think that would be fucking poetic. I think that would be poetic. And also at that point, what do you call the TNT and TBS titles? The USA title. Well, dude, I mean, there's 30 other belts that could replace it. They mean nothing. There's what the international, the Atlantic, fucking the trios tag, the Animal the tag. Planet title. Like, dude, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a fucking real thing soon, dude. Like, my, do I think, I think, I, you guys touched on it on another show I saw that um the Run-In podcast said it first. All the that, comment of the week last week. Yeah, that they want to, they should concentrate on smaller venues like Universal with TNA. Absolutely. Do what you did before Daly's Place. You have the perfect building for it, dude. AEW's best shows have all come out of there. Their weekly shows, when they were the best, were out of Daly's Place. I That's agree. when AEW was peak. That's that was like was their peak. home. Like, it became their home. Yeah. They killed the pandemic. They were amazing during the pandemic, man. Like, they put on some of the best wrestling during the pandemic, and the way they changed the hard game, like, bro, it was, it was freaking amazing, dude. Like, WWE became comedic, but, I mean, it was still nice to have something new. Every week during that. And when they got the Thunderdome stuff, it started getting a little bit better. But like AEW during there, man, that was my saving grace. That was like, wow, this is really good weekly episodic wrestling that has great matches and, and good shit because they were looking more at the performance side as mm -hmm. opposed to the audience connection side. That's why someone like Akira Shida could be like have their title for as long as she did because there was no real fan interaction. She'll never be the top star in your women's division when there's a fucking audience, but if you're doing it just for TV with a few people, dude, you can highlight her at all times. She's perfect for it. Absolutely. So, Phil, my last question I do have for you before we get into our commercial break, do you think 
AEW brought the best out in WWE. Competition brings the best out in anybody. Um, I think that they finally got scared when they started landing other people and when they started really caring about the wrestling. Because Triple H has always cared about the wrestling part of the product and the entertainment mm-hmm. part of the product. And I think it made them more like, all right, you want to do that? Well, we're going to do this. And that brings out the best in everybody. And the problem with it, with when you make it a competition with a guy like Triple H versus a guy like Tony Khan is Triple H knows it's business. Tony Khan takes it personally. Yep. And you can't put business and, and, and personal together. You know that as someone who owns a business yourself and runs something like this. It's there's a business side to things and there's a professional and a friendship side. There's three. And when you can work together on those, you can make gold. You can take legitimate heat and turn it into a masterpiece. Or you can let it all just explode backstage and ruin any chance you got at making something good. It's, I think AEW gave WWE the opportunity to shine when it needed to and dust off that jacket and say, you want to compete? All right, well, I'm going to give you the best we got. And, and, and yeah, they did because it's, it's competition, man. And, and, and they're not real. Always brings valid. out the best in everybody. They're not real valid competition, but it was just enough to give them that push. It kind of gave WWE, better. I feel like that kick in the ass that they kind of needed because they were doing Absolutely. the same old thing over and over again. And I think AEW, you know, being on, especially going against NXT and beating them, I think Triple H, you know, took that very personally because NXT oh, was yeah. a baby. Yeah. And, you know, it made them step up. And I'm oh, glad God. that WWE right now is, you know, must watch TV. It's been long overdue. And like I said, and I always say this every week here on the We Are Wrestling podcast, I want all of these wrestling promotions to succeed i want all the independent wrestling promotions to succeed i want you know tna nwa mlw and i especially want aew to succeed because competition always brings out the best in everybody and with aew you know coming into you know the professional wrestling world it's got a lot of us more passionate about this sport that we love to talk about um i think wrestling is hitting another peak finally and it's been a long, long time coming, time. man. A long time coming. And there's so many great independent guys out there that are going to be stars. That like, it, it's just it's great that AEW can help them get there quicker. It's helped that companies like TNA can do that as well. Um, I'm more excited about TNA going back to TNA. Oh my god! And seeing what wait. they're going to do because it's people like talk about AEW, but don't sleep on TNA from 2003 to like 2009, dude. Like. That was some of the best professional wrestling on the planet. I loved old school TNA. Don't get me started. <laughs> oh, bro, it was a great. good time, Phil. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Like TNA back then, man. Like a lot of these stars you have now, dude. Thank TNA for getting them over as much as honing their craft as good as they did. Like, dude, Christian Cage became the single star and the daddy that he is for AEW. In his TNA, Christian Cage's best singles run outside of AEW as a bad guy right now is probably TNA. TNA, 100%. Like, dude, his TNA runs were fucking amazing. Like, Legendary. They were great. They were fucking great. So, like, I don't even think AEW, in my opinion, is, like, captured what TNA did. Like, when TNA signed Kurt Angle back in the day, dude. Yep, and I was going to, and that's the thing. Whoa. I got to say this about Kurt Angle. And I said this during the extra that we did on the Kurt Angle documentary. The only problem I had with that documentary was, you know, Stone Cold, you know, kind of down talking TNA with Kurt Angle's Dude, run. Because Kurt Angle's TNA run, yeah. run was incredible. Incre- Dude, the shit they did before Fortune, when when it was just like Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe and that dream Main Event match. Mafia. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what it was. Main Event Mafia. Um, It was amazing, dude. He may have been drugged out of his mind, but that motherfucker can wrestle a coat rack. Like, it, it's... The matches he put on in TNA were, were fucking classic, dude. And he was hard style. Like, there were so many greats back then, dude. James Storm, Bobby Roode, Austin Aries. Like, it, it's... Dude, that, TNA was no joke, dude. Like, it was great. So, WWE, like, AEW, 
there's a lot of great guys in there right now that I can't wait to see what they do in the future to be like surprise rumble entrance and shit like that. But like, I don't even think AEW has reached TNA type quality yet for me, dude. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that, you know, around that time in TNA on spike, they were drawing like 3 million. Oh yeah. A week. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Dude. It did good TV. Like it was really good. Like, I mean, I, I look back at TNA fondly, man. And the coolest thing they were doing is some of their guys were still going on indie shows. Like I remember seeing AJ oh, Styles and Christopher Daniels in Framingham, Massachusetts in like 2004, dude. Like it, it's with Velvet Sky and like, I think Jay Lethal. Like it, I paid 20 bucks and then I get to watch him on Spike TV later that week. That's what AEW is doing with like our guys now. It, it's great, dude. Like, I mean, I look at a tag team who number 55, I think it was this year in the top 100, Miracle Generation. God, they're the so cur- talented, them too. Dude. To 22. all the maniacs out there, I highly encourage you to go on your smartphone and look up Miracle Generation. I believe on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel, we actually sponsored a couple of their matches at Blitzkrieg, which the full matches are up on the channel. Highly recommend Mir- checking them out. Miracle Generation is the next generation Hardys and Young Bucks. They're they're so insanely talented, and they deserve all the success that they worked for it. Like they're 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 going to be stars. Like and they're going to be in TNA and going to be in AEW, WWE. Whoever gets them is 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 lucky. They're phenomenal, dude. Like I can't wait to see what they do. I can't wait as well, but Phil, I appreciate you, you know, being a part of the first half of the We Are Wrestling podcast this week. And guys, if you want to see Phil more often, subscribe to our We Are Wrestling Patreon page, which will be launching January 2024. We Are Wrestling Old School versus New School is coming back, and it's going to be two times better than it was And, you know, Phil and I, we got lots of awesome things, you know, in store for you guys. But up next, we have, of course, the Comet of the Week. The Load Rager returns to the podcast. And we got the We Are Wrestling news and rumors. We'll be right back with more We Are Wrestling Podcast 87. So we're going to ask my daughter some questions now. So, Fiona, what do you think of Carmelo Hayes? What's his character like? Huh? Carmelo Hayes. Who's Carmelo Hayes? Um, is he a bad guy? You tell me. Yeah. A bad guy? What do you look like? Black hair. Long black hair. Yep. Um, I have like brown eyes. Okay. All right, now who's Braun Breaker? Wait, wait, real quick. Real, real, real quick, Phil. Did Carmelo Hayes attack Trick Williams? Yes or no? Um, yeah. Yeah, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, players? WWE Hall of Famer Teddy Long, and you are listening to the We Are Wrestling Podcast. And if you don't listen to it, then it's one on one with The Undertaker. <laughs> are you looking for wrestling content? Well, We Are Wrestling provides everything pro wrestling. The best one, Donnie, begins in the Load Rager Ben, are wrestling marks like you who love this sport. We Are Wrestling has it all when it comes to wrestling content. We have different podcasts, vlogs, reactions, full wrestling matches, live pay-per-view watch-alongs, interviews, predictions, and so much more. Only on We Are Wrestling. What are you waiting for? Subscribe and become a We Are Wrestling Maniac now. We're back, and before we get into the We Are Wrestling news and rumors, and of course the comment of the week... I do want to give you guys heads up that the rest of, you know, We Are Wrestling Podcast 87, I'm going to be riding solo. Unfortunately, my co-host, the Load Rager Ben, he still can't figure out what the issue is with his setup. So, unfortunately, you know, he's not available right now, but the show must go on. And I do got to give, you know, Phil a huge shout out for, you know, being a part of the first half of the We Are Wrestling Podcast. But here we go. And every week we do this thing on the We Are Wrestling podcast called The Comet of the Week. And if you want to get your comet featured on a future episode of the We Are Wrestling podcast, all you got to do is just leave a comment over on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel or over on our social media pages. 
So the winner this week is at Juggalo David 9016 and he said this on one of my reaction videos, I believe it was the CM Punk and Seth Rollins face to face video, he said, I'm with you. Seth Rollins became boring in style. It's time for him to lose the World Heavyweight title. Plus, his annoying Joker gimmick is getting so annoying. Yes, people still sing his songs, but people get tired of his dumb Joker laugh. Can't wait for CM Punk to embarrass, humble, and destroy Seth Rollins at WrestleMania and take his World Heavyweight Championship and send the Visionary over to SmackDown. And honestly... Seth Rollins is, you know, obviously a first-class Hall of Famer. I think that he is, you know, one of the best, you know, currently on the WWE roster. But I feel like, you know, he needs a break. I feel like his, you know, gimmick is just becoming a little too repetitive at this point. And I'm not really, you know, getting behind him as much. I feel like with the World Heavyweight Championship, he should have lost it to Shinsuke. I felt like that could have put Shinsuke over as... Uh, you know, legitimate threat as a heel, even though they're actually doing pretty good with him and Cody right now. I, you know, also wanted Finn Balor to win the championship to add more legitimacy to Judgment Day, which obviously didn't happen. Damian Priest hasn't even cashed in the money in the bank. And honestly, I'm okay with Rollins being champion until WrestleMania. But after that, like, we need something different, whether he goes on SmackDown or he takes, you know, a little break. I feel like, you know, Seth Rollins, you know, the gimmick is getting old. I just want to see Seth Rollins be Seth Rollins. But congratulations to Juggalo David on the comment of the week. So now, with that being said, let's dive into the We Are Wrestling news and rumors. And starting things off, according to Fightful, speaking of Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins and the man Becky Lynch's contracts are set to be expired in June 2023, and my thoughts on, you know, their contract, you know, being up pretty soon, I don't see them going to AEW, they're definitely not getting on that <laughs> ship that's sinking, I don't see them really going anywhere else, I feel like WWE is their home, but the only thing that concerns me about their contracts is being up is them being full-time parents now, because obviously they just had, you know, a baby not that long ago. I think it was two years ago. And Becky Lynch, you know, she could, you know, decide to, you know, hang up the boots and become a full-time mother. But I do think that overall, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, they're not going anywhere. I think that it's only a matter of time before we find out that they signed, you know, a contract extension. Just, if I were WWE, I wouldn't piss Seth Rollins off <laughs> with this whole CM Punk thing. But moving on now to our next topic here. This week, set, this week, CM Punk visited the WWE Performance Center. According to PW Insider, Punk is training and holding court with NXT talent. It was said that there was a massive, genuine excitement about when Punk showed up and spent the day with talent. What's my thoughts on this? Well, here's what I got to say, man. CM Punk is really taking that leadership role. And you could just tell when you're watching him, you know, in the ring. He just seems so much more generally happier. And I think that, you know, Punk is home. And, you know, sometimes you have to learn, you know, on your own. And he thought that it was going to be, you know, greener on the other side. Which, you know, of course... He ran into a lot of drama. He's, you know, had a lot of negative, you know, news within the last, you know, couple of years during his AEW run, thanks to that whole media scrum. But with, you know, CM Punk visiting the Performance Center, he is just proving that he is a true professional and especially working with somebody like Seth Rollins, who both of the two, you know, have legitimate heat, but they know that controversy makes money. They know that, you know, People want to see it, and they're being both professionals about it, and they are putting their differences to the side and working together. And that is the big difference between WWE and AEW is that WWE, if you have issues with somebody, you better find a way and you better make it work because at the end of the day, you are a professional. In AEW, you can you know have heat with somebody, and if you don't want to work with them, then you don't have to work with them. 
that's just, you know, the way it is. And they left a lot of money on the table, which we talked about earlier, you know, on the podcast. But seeing CM Punk, you know, training the NXT kids, the talent, I actually really do like that a lot because CM Punk, obviously right now, I think in my opinion, is the biggest draw in professional wrestling right now. And if you <laughs> bring it in somebody that knows how to put asses in seats, somebody that, you know, is being talked about the most right now over to NXT, which is the developmental program. That is very smart because there are, you know, some really good prospects over on the NXT brand that could definitely use some of CM Punk's advice. So honestly, I love that. And the morales in WWE right now have never been higher. And I think a lot of that has to do with CM Punk. But moving on now to our next topic here. Speaking of TNA Wrestling, <clears throat> TNA Wrestling partnered with Endeavor Streaming to distribute TNA Plus. TNA Plus will be available at TNAWrestling.com via iOS, TV, OS, and Android mobile apps, as well as big screen devices such as Android TV, Fire TV, and Roku, with more platforms to follow. Subscribers will have the choice of a special attraction membership tier that features access to the full TNA Impact Wrestling Library and all the TNA special pay-per-view programmings other than the four tentpole annual events offered at the price of $9.99 monthly or $95.99 per year and a world championship membership tier that includes all the perks of the special attraction tier plus the four tent pull pay-per-view events offered at a price of $219 per year. Further details and subscription information to the new service can be found at tnawrestling.com. What's my thoughts on this move for TNA Wrestling? I absolutely love this move. And it sucks that, you know, they're not getting a legitimate TV deal. But we're going to be going into 2024. And a lot of these, you know, television shows, they are transitioning from, you know, cable to, you know, these streaming, you know, devices. And, you know, these services like Netflix, you know, Hulu, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, and all of these different, you know, services. And it seems like we're going in that direction. A lot of people are cutting the cord. And I was a late one. I cut the cord pretty late. But, you know, I'm, you know, transitioning. I'm more on Netflix. I'm more on, you know, Hulu, all these, you know, streaming, you know, services than, you know, my YouTube TV. So I do think that, you know, TNA wrestling going in that direction is smart and endeavored streaming. That's just, you know, opening the door up to, you know, do some stuff with WWE, which I think is a great move. And more eyes are going to be on TNA wrestling going into 2024 with this, you know, big change. And I think that honestly, this, you know, could really help them get back to that number two spot. And I think. With AEW, you know, losing a lot of momentum every single week, it's not helping, you know, their company. TNA could, you know, really sneak up on them and take that number two spot back. And I think it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens within the next, you know, few years or so. But TNA wrestling, I think a lot of people need to keep their eyes on them. And honestly, I might, you know, do the subscription for a whole year. I already know that, you know, here on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel, I will be doing a live watch along to TNA Wrestling Hard to Kill, which will be the very first, you know, TNA show back in its company. So I will be doing a live watch along to that. And then I'm going to make the decision whether or not I want to get TNA Plus, which I feel like realistically I'm going to because I grew up loving TNA. And last but not least, we have one more news, which actually... You know, Kate just came in yesterday as, you know, I'm recording, you know, the podcast right now. It's currently Saturday when I, when me and Phil were, you know, talking, that was on Friday. So this just came out, you know, after me and Phil recorded the first half of the podcast and Liv Morgan was arrested on Thursday in summer country, Florida after a traffic stop. Morgan was arrested for possession of marijuana, not more than 20 grams, and possession of drugs. 
possibly synthetic cannabinoid, which I don't know if I pronounced that right. Apologize. I don't have the load rager to, you know, fix my grammar. Morgan has already been bonded out. <clears throat> and here's my thoughts on, you know, Lib Morgan being arrested for marijuana. I can't believe people are still getting arrested for weed. <laughs> and it's, you know, crazy because it's becoming legalized everywhere. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, cannabis. There's nothing wrong with marijuana. And I think WWE's policy now, like wrestlers are allowed to, you know, smoke marijuana or, you know, eat edibles. They are allowed to, you know, have that in their system during, you know, the drug test and stuff, which I really don't see a problem with it. But I do think that, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, there is going to be some negative feedback on it because she is a WWE superstar, but I think there's really nothing wrong with it. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, this, you know, hit the news, but I don't think that she's going to be, you know, getting suspended from WWE. There is no reports as of right now of a suspension or anything, but I hope that, you know, Lynn Morgan, she keeps her head up and we need to legalize marijuana in all 50 states here in the United States. That's, you know, the message here. Going to keep it short and sweet. But guys, up next, we have the main event topic. And this week, there will be no getting put over segment. We're going to wait for Ben to come back. Hopefully next week on, you know, the show to get back into, you know, the getting put over segment. But guys, we'll be right back with more We Are Wrestling Podcast 87. Hey, this is your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle. And you're listening to the We Are Wrestling Podcast. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Tell me when I'm telling lies. It's me, Ricky Williams. I'm not mad at that. No, no Ricky. Bullshit. 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 Tell me when I'm telling lies. It's me, Ricky Williams. What's up, We Are Wrestling? How are y'all doing today? This is Ricky Williams, by the way. Ricky Jovante Williams. Um, shout out to Don, Donnie, aka Donnie, the best one. Shout out to Benjamin. I call him Benjamin, aka Uncle Ben. But let me get into this real quick. Let me get into this real quick. Um, AEW is booking. Let me start with that. I don't think. I don't think AEW's booking is bad at all. I think it's just not consistent. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of guys go over to a new wrestling promotion or a young wrestling promotion and they think the booking is going to be all the way that good. I don't think the booking has been bad for AEW. I don't think it's just been consistent. Plus, I don't think they're telling stories properly or pushing guys when it's time to push them at that right given time. Um, and guys are getting over pushed. Now, I don't want to be negative or anything like that, but look at John Moxley. He's kind of over pushed, right? But he's been dedicated to that company and they've been rewarding him. So it's 50 50, depending on how you look at it. But then look at guys like, look, look at Swerve. He's on the roll right now, especially from that Adam Page feud. Now people don't know what to do with Swerve. Right. The AEW doesn't know what to do with Swerve all the way. They don't think they should put him up here. Or yeah, they don't know if they should pull the trigger yet. And I think they're trigger, I think they're trigger reluctant and pushing the trigger on Swerve. But moral of the story is, AEW's booking has been 50 50 with me so far. I just think that they don't, they kind of tell the same stories all the time. And then they'll tell some good stories. They'll make some good characters out of it. So. It's been 50-50 to me overall. I just say it's 50-50. And in AEW, now let's go to AEW losing their TV deal, potentially. Blame Tony Khan for that. He's been throwing shade at WWE all year, talking about the views, the superstars' returns. He's been throwing shade at WWE every single second. Instead of throwing shade at WWE, how about make your company even greater? And I think this is, I think people are starting to see these antics. So then they're going to be like, oh, we can't take this guy seriously. Oh, we can't take this guy seriously. 
Oh, we can't take this guy. So you're making your company look bad and by doing that. Don't be fun. So my advice is to stop throwing little jabs at WWE. They do it too sometimes. I'll be catching it. Well, how about just make your company greater? Just make it greater. Like. Let them do them. You do you. Put AEW in the best position to win. Overall, period. I love that. There doesn't really need to be any competition like that, does it? Like, no disrespectful competition, I mean. Like, you got your product, they got their product. That's it. But this is just my opinion overall. I'm going to keep this video short. Shout out to the We Are Wrestling fans. Shout out to Johnny and Ben. Peace out. Tell me when I'm telling lies. It's me, Ricky Williams. I'm not mad at that. No, Ricky. Bullshit. Bullshit. Tell me when I'm telling lies. It's me, Ricky Williams. We're back, and our main event topic for the We Are Wrestling Podcast 87. WWE executives had a long meeting with Warner Brother Discovery about potentially a raw deal. PW Insider reports TKO, Mark Sharpio, Khan, and Triple H went to New York City this past Monday morning where they had a meeting for several hours at Warner Brothers. It was added that there are still other suitors for Raw. Obviously, if a deal is reached between WWE and Warner Brothers Discovery, that would be a major impact on AEW, who currently has a TV deal with Warner Brothers Discovery that it runs through the end of 2024. Tony Khan meet, met with Warner Brothers Discovery on Tuesday. According to Nick Hausman, there is a vibe that Tony Khan and AEW are in danger of not being renewed by Warner Brothers Discovery on TBS or TNT. What's my thoughts on this news? And this is really huge here. I did hear that CM Punk kind of opened the door for WWE to, you know, get this meeting with Warner Brothers Discovery, which honestly doesn't surprise me. But I do think a lot of people are forgetting that Cody Rhodes also, you know, was day one in AEW. So, you know, he also could have been another, you know, key player in, you know, opening up these, you know, talks between Warner Brothers and WWE. I think that, you know, this is huge because obviously right now, you know, there are lots of, you know, networks that want to get, you know, WWE because there is no off season when it comes to this, you know, professional wrestling. So it is consistent live television every week. So there's going to be a lot of, you know, suitors that are very interested in acquiring rights to, you know, Monday Night Raw. And seeing that Warner Brothers Discovery is interested, that really, like, is going to be a huge thing with AEW and Tony Khan because ever since, you know, AEW, you know, was born, that was the network that, you know, got Dynamite. And now, you know, Collision, Rampage. And it seemed like AEW and Tony Khan, they had a great relationship with Warner Brothers Discovery. And if I were Tony Khan, I would be scared right now. And, man, this is not good for AEW whatsoever. Especially if, you know, Warner Brothers does get, you know, Monday Night Raw. And, you know, get, starts a working relationship with WWE. That's not going to be looking really good for AEW and that momentum that, you know, AEW is losing. They're just going to continue to lose it. And I really hope that AEW, you know, can get a better TV deal because, man, I, I always say this. I want all of these professional wrestling companies to succeed. And if WWE gets, you know, a deal with them, you know, good for them, but... AEW, like, I hope that, you know, they don't lose, you know, a TV deal in the process because right now, you know, competition, it always brings out the best in everybody. Phil said it best when I asked him about this topic in particular before we got into the second half of the show. And it does really bring out the best in everybody. And with AEW, I don't want to see it to go anywhere. It's just unfortunate. The talent is there. It's just the lack of creative booking and we need to separate ring of honor and AEW. Like 
it's just becoming really repetitive at this point. And it's so unfortunate because I am, you know, AEW's biggest fan. I'm rooting for AEW to, you know, succeed. I want to see TNA wrestling succeed. I want to see NWA with Billy Corgan succeed because the more pro wrestling there is, the better it is for the pro wrestling community, especially for us. We are wrestling maniacs. It gives us more to talk about. And I really hope that, you know, Tony Khan can get the help he needs behind the scenes because clearly him doing it by himself, he is burnt out. I don't know how this man, you know, <laughs> he's running, you know, a football team, Jacksonville Jaguars. He's running some soccer FIBA team. And he's also, you know, running AEW, doing three television shows and Ring of Honor. Like, you are just burning yourself out. There's a reason why Triple H has a guy like Shawn Michaels running NXT. There's a reason why Triple H has Bruce Prichard by his side during all of this. There's a reason why, you know, Kevin Dunn has been, you know, Vince McMahon's, you know, biggest stooge for the last, you know, 30 to 40 years. Because you need to have that right hand man to, you know, really help you out. And Tony Khan just needs to get help. I really want AEW to succeed. I think that this Continental Classic has been good, but it also has been lazy booking when it comes to, you know, the storylines and stuff. I feel like it's very lackluster right now, especially with AEW's World's End coming toward coming December 30th, which you know, we're like pretty much almost 10 days away from that pay-per-view and there's really not that much storyline going on that makes you go, I need to spend $50 on this pay-per-view. And that is a huge issue, even though AEW, one of the pros about their promotion is their pay-per-views are always 10 stars. I actually enjoy watching a T AEW pay-per-view more than a WWE premier live event. I think the matches are way better, but I don't know if Tony Khan and AEW are endangered. I think it's time that Tony Khan, you know, puts that, you know, ego to the side and he really could sit there and reflect because I remember watching the very first press conference in, you know, AEW and I'm sure you, we are wrestling maniacs. Some of you watched it as well because you were very excited that there is, you know, an alternative here in, you know, professional wrestling once again. And Tony Khan, one of his goals was to listen to the fans. And I feel like, you know, Triple H has done that with, you know, this new change in WWE, which is why they're putting on such great television every week. Tony Khan, you know, he just can't take criticism and he thinks it's his way or the highway. And that is not the right way to think. You need to give the people what they want. There's been multiple people that have, you know, complained time after time about, you know, his lack of booking decisions and, you know, creative. And it just shows like, you know, this week, Swerve, who is so over right now with, you know, the crowd, you know, you had John Boxley beat him, which if I were Tony Khan booking, you know, Swerve, I wouldn't have this man lose at all because you can have him go on this, you know, dominant winning streak, have him go for the AEW championship eventually, win the title, and then you can even have the commentary, you know, team say, who's going to stop Swerve? Nobody can beat him. That makes his championship, you know, run a little bit more, you know, prestigious and it adds some legitimacy to it. Another example, Takeshita. You know, he was a part of the Don Cowles family. They had him beat Kenny Omega not once, twice. He pinned him, you know, at all in, and then at all out, he beat Kenny Omega in a singles match. What have they done with him? Nothing. They've lost all that momentum. It doesn't help that Adam Cole also sustained, you know, that injury, and MJF now is dealing with injuries as well. So the injury thing is really not helping them whatsoever. I am really worried about AEW, and if WWE, you know, gets this deal with Warner Brothers Discovery, AEW, man, they're going to really have to sit with their talent, and they're going to have to figure something out, because if you lose your TV deal to your competition, that really doesn't look good for your promotion whatsoever, 
And honestly, I can't wait to see what excuses Tony Khan's going to make because you already know he's not going to take accountability for putting on, you know, bad television. So we're just going to have to, you know, wait and see, play it ear by ear. And obviously we're going to talk about it here on the We Are Wrestling podcast. But guys, let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on all the topics that we covered this week on the podcast. I'm sorry that, you know, the Load Rager Ben, my co-host here on the podcast, you know, has been dealing with, you know, lots of things going on. He's starting a new job. He's also dealing with a lot of technical difficulties with, you know, his camera and, you know, his microphone setup. I am going to be going over to his place, you know, next week, try to help him, you know, get the setup fixed. But I know for the rest of the year, you know, Ben and I, we will be able to do the podcast because we are going to be seeing each other next weekend before, you know, Christmas Eve and Christmas. He is going to be coming over. And the week after, me and him are going to be going to Long Island, New York. So we also can, you know, record an episode of the podcast then. So I do apologize on Ben's behalf for not want, like not being here right now. He, you know, really wanted to be a part of this week's episode. He was very excited about the topics we had. But unfortunately, you know, things come up and the show must go on. But if you guys enjoyed this week's episode of the We Are Wrestling podcast, make sure to smash that like button now. If you're listening to the podcast, give us a five-star review, not just any review, a best one review, and download the episode. But if you have not checked out the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel, we have a new vlog up on there, the Big Event New York, where I got the opportunity to meet so many wrestlers, such a great, you know, meet and greet experience, and a great vlog. Also, we have a couple reaction videos up on the channel as well. I actually, you know, did some reactions to SmackDown. Also have some up from Raw. So if you guys want to check all that good stuff out, go subscribe over to the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel. Going into 2024, We Are Wrestling will be having an exclusive Patreon page for all the We Are Wrestling Die Heart Maniacs. We're going to be having some exclusive series over there. Like We Are Wrestling Old School versus New School, it's coming back. The link's down in the description below. You can go follow me over on my social media pages at Best One Donnie, or you can go follow the We Are Wrestling social medias. All the links down in the description below. But of course, all the We Are Wrestling maniacs out there worldwide. I really hope you guys enjoyed this, you know, episode of just going all over the place. It's definitely going to be a special one that we're going to look back at and say, "Damn, what a episode!" But of course, to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs, we are taking over. Peace.